Richard Todd, I hope you're doing well, sir. Welcome back to T-Town. Yeah, it's great to be. Well, I'm not in T-Town. I'm in Atlanta, but it's great to be on the phone with you. Yeah, I'm just saying <laughs> welcome back to T-Town via the airways. Uh, it's always good, right. good to catch up with you and talk a little Alabama football. Let's start with this past season. Nick Saban does it again. Yeah, he's pretty remarkable. It's been, he was, Alabama fans, we've really been spoiled here lately. I mean, it's been an unbelievable run, and and I really think what what uh, Coach Saban has done. I mean, I'm a big Durbont fan, obviously, because I played for him. But what Saban's done is it may be a little more impressive, just because of the number of uh, uh, scholarships that the, the teams can give nowadays. So you can only give 25 a year, and so you've got to be really certain on a lot of people. And you know, I mean, just how can you? Four out of seven years, he's won the national championship. That's that's unbelievable in modern times. Richard, I'm I'm, I'm glad you said that because I, I've also said it very similar, and, and I I try to you know preface it by saying I don't want it to sound disrespectful to Coach Bryant, but this time and era, it, it was created to prevent the Alabamas of the world from going on what you guys were able to do in the '70s and the '60s, and uh, you look back at Alabama football, Oklahoma in the '50s. Uh, g- going back to that, you, someone who played for Coach Bryant, do you hear it? Do you find it disrespectful when ple- people say that Saban's right there with Bryant? No, no. I think it's you know, I think it's, it's just a different era. It's like you know, com- uh, just talking about myself, trying to care- compare me to Alabama quarterbacks today is like it's impossible. We ran the wishbone. We didn't. You know, we didn't run run the pro attack. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't do that. So it's like it's really hard to compare during different eras. But you know, you kind of dealt the cards you are at the offense you go to, or or if you're coaching at that time, what the rules are letting you get away with, or you know what you can do. So I mean, it's just you know, I think with you know with them basically giving 25 scholarship, it's kind of like a draft. You know, uh, of course, you know, Coach Saban seems like he gets you know seven or eight first round picks where other people may not get those first round picks and that's you know that's why we've been so successful well and you look back you were drafted in the first round the six overall pick in the 1976 nfl draft if i can walk you back we had pro day on campus yesterday help me understand that evaluation process that you went through being that high of a pick back in the mid 70s and sort of the, <laughs> i mean i <laughs> I mean, well, the valuation I mean, process of the NFL well, when they were evaluating. Yeah, well, it's kind of funny. I, you know, I'll give you the whole background. You know, the, back in my day, uh, there were two uh, all-star games at the same time. There was a senior bowl and there was a hula bowl. So I got a letter from both of them, and, and I wanted to go play at the hula bowl. That's in Hawaii. You know, I grew up in Mobile. I played at Ladd Stadium for Davidson High School. I've been in Mobile my whole life, you know, since the eighth grade. So it didn't seem too exciting to me to go to the senior bowl. So – uh, Coach Bryant called me up, and and about a uh, I don't know those letters came out about three or four days later, and he says I want you to come over here tomorrow morning at nine. I go yes sir. So I came over, and he said you haven't called these people back with a senior boat, and I said well, Coach, I'm uh, lived in Mobile my whole life. I was going to go to the Hula Bowl. I've never been to Hawaii. May, you know, may never get a chance to go back. So he said no, no, no. You call him. Uh, you call him the Senior Bowl right here, and he dialed him on the phone and got the guy on the phone, and I committed right there. To go to the senior bowl, and it was really a blessing because uh, you know I didn't uh, I didn't realize, but that's that's where all the pro scouts went to, and we ran the wishbone. I think we threw like six times a game my senior year, and and I had a good sugar bowl. You know, we threw twelve times, and I completed ten of them. So that you know that was a good game back you know back in our day for the wishbone. So I went down there and had a really good game. I think I threw for like three hundred thirty yards in about a half. So that's that's how I became the number one pick. I think. Uh, Tampa Bay came up uh, to Tuscaloosa, and I just went out with receivers and three. There was no, there was no combine. Nobody checked how many, how fast you were in the four forty, how many dips you could do, or bench presses, and how far you could jump. You know, there was nothing like that done. And I think the Jets came down too. And those were only a couple of teams. Richard Todd right now, Alabama legendary quarterback inside the game here on a Throwback Thursday presented by Brian Harden Construction. If I could go back and talk about the evaluation of a quarterback, not the evaluation, but what it takes to be just not at the college level, but the NFL level, the preparation that it takes. I, I'm not trying to, to give quarterbacks this extra credit. Every position has its own specialty, 
But quarterbacks, it's like they never really have a day off. They they work throughout the off season, grooming, you know, their passing ability. Walk us through that. What it takes to be a great quarterback. So, well, I think anybody in college football, especially Division One, no matter what position you're playing, kind of goes through the same routine. It's always work. But I think, you know, looking at my time in high school and looking at these guys now, it's so much more advanced. These these players and these, co- you know, the coaches are so much more advanced in the passing game and this spread offense that they do, and, and which, you know, has, has a lot of passing involved with that, too. They have these summer seven-on-seven camps where they're competing against the best players in the country and you know it's just uh, it's just a lot further along than it was back in my time it took me three or four years to to learn the passing game with the you know with the jets when i went up there and a lot of people said i didn't understand it you know nine or ten years later <laughs> well you know the, just the ironing out the craft of, of what it takes and, and we've got a huge quarterback competition coming up uh this spring it'll start tomorrow three thirty. Uh, the, the Crimson Tide will go back out on the practice field for 15 days of spring practice under Nick Saban. And, and I, I'd like to sort of pick your brain a little bit of, of when you enter one of those quarterback competition, what's going through your mind uh, when you're competing for playing time? Well, I think uh, when, when I played in the 70s, we played three quarterbacks, you know, a game just about, or maybe more. Depends on what we're doing now. Now it's totally different. It seems like with, with Coach Saban, you know, you got the starting quarterback, and it's more like pro football. He's he's in there until he just really blows up, and you know can't can't play that way or has a couple of bad ball games and then make a substitute. But uh, you know, Coach Saban's been very loyal to the quarterbacks. I mean, uh, just kind of the criticism they have about you know Alabama quarterbacks nowadays is you know you've got to be a game manager with and. <laughs> When I was a quarterback at Alabama, running the wishbone, you're sort of the same thing. You know, we had a great, we had a great defense. Uh, we had good running backs, great offensive line. We had a lot of depth, and that's you know, unless when you're the quarterback at Alabama, your job is to go out there and just get the offense moving. Don't make mistakes. Uh, try not to make mistakes where where they kill you. Kind of like the Ole Miss game where we had the fumbles and all that last year, but. Uh, and I'm sure these guys are just working their tails off because, you know, being an Alabama quarterback is quite a feat these days, and you're going to get a lot of press, and, and uh, you know, it's just a great a great team to be a quarterback on. Well, how do you keep, in a quarterback competition, how do you keep from yourself from trying to do too much? In other words, going outside of your ability and trying to press a little bit as a competition wears on? Well, I'm sure as the competition probably starts, you're probably going to have a lot of that. I mean, Coach Bryan used to take a walk with the quarterbacks, and he'd always tell us, if you make a mistake, make a big one. You can't you can't go out there and be scared to make a mistake. Uh, so you just got to go out and kind of do the best you can. These, then, you know, these guys have played in a lot of, of big games, whether it be in high school, uh, coming up, and and state state championships or whatever else. So it's it's nothing new new to them, and I'm sure most of them know how to control themselves you know when when we look at the quarterback uh in the new college football uh what what do you you're, you're sitting up at the stands not just alabama just around college football in general uh you, you see the option uh read or the zone read uh from these quarterbacks what, what do you see in the quarterbacks in, in college football well I, I mean it's kind of hard to i think the sec uh probably Right now with their offenses like Alabama, Georgia, uh, I guess LSU, I'm trying to think of all the teams that are just basically kind of a, a pro-style attack. Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah, it's just, you know, running game and, and and drop back. It's just, you know, kind of pro football. It's a great, it's a great place for quarterbacks to come. I know that, uh, you know, I guess the Eastern kid from – California uh, committed to Georgia a couple of years ago, and that's basically what he said. He wanted to come play in the SEC, the best conference in football, and then he wanted to play for a pro-style offense because he wants to go go to the next level. So I think I think that's what a lot of, you know, if, if, if guys, you know, everybody's dream, of course, in, in high school these days, if they think they're a five-star or whatever, is to go to the next level. You know, back in our day, we never thought about pro football. I never thought about it in my life till. Maybe my senior year when I thought I had a chance. You know, you know, you didn't, you really didn't come to Alabama to play pro football. You just came to play on a, you know, on a great team, and it just worked out like that. But, but now I think that's that's the way I think Saban gets so many great players from around the country is 
you know, I mean, he's pretty good at saying, hey, we can win a national championship, and by the way, I'll get you to the next level. And I think I think that's a pretty good sales pitch of these guys nowadays. Richard Todd right now inside the game. Final couple of questions. When you look at the NFL now, the way they protect the quarterback, you ever go back and maybe a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you want to say jealousy, but uh, – uh, they they didn't they didn't give you guys a lot of protection. You guys got hit, but it seems like now we protect the quarterback a lot in the NFL. Well, I think that's due to you know the passing game. Uh, also, the salaries these days are just you know astronomical compared to, to to when I played. And you know it is a it is a game. I think it's what is it over sixty percent passing in the whole league. It is. So it's you know it's 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 spread them out and throw it and you want to keep your quarterback healthy and that's that's the reason they're doing it. and plus the salaries I mean you know you're paying these guys x amount of dollars and the first game they get drilled in the head and they're out for the rest of the season you know or tear up a knee or something I mean it's it's just uh, trying to keep the you know the game going and the fans happy and not lose your players. Let me go back to the game that sticks out to you and I, and I know Alabama never lost an SEC game while you were the starting quarterback at the University of Alabama. Is there one game, one performance that stands out to you? No, the game, uh, the game I always think about is when we played in the, when I was a sophomore, and we played in the Sugar Bowl the last uh, time we played at T- Tulane Stadium, and we were number one and Notre Dame was number two, and, and I really think we had the, the best team in the country that year. But, I think I didn't play but 15 or 16 plays, so it was just, it was not me playing that I remember, but it was just the game. It was such a big game, and, and I really think we had a better team in the country because we played about everybody on our team. <laughs> I mean, everybody was involved, and, you know, we, we got beat. We missed an extra point. We lost by one point, and their guy threw a, a kind of a lucky pass out of the end zone with, I don't know, a minute or so left, and it was on second down, and Leroy Cook are all American defensive end when we watched the film i mean he stumbled nobody touched him and he and if he wouldn't have fallen i mean he fell and and got up and hit him right when he threw the ball it would have been a safety so you know because i really think we had the best thing that's the only college game i ever cried at (laughs) i was in the shower crying after that game because i thought you know we definitely had the better team we won the upi national champion but uh you know they ended up getting the ap so it was kind of a split it's one of those 15 national championships or 16 that we have you know that we still count 16 national titles, 119 first-team All-Americans, 25 SEC titles. Uh, Alabama's tradition uh, is is so awesome to be a part of and to be able to feature guys like yourself to help us uh, embrace that tradition and talk about it. We really appreciate the conversation of helping us talk some Alabama football here in Tuscaloosa. Richard, as always, thanks so much for helping us out. I hope you have a great afternoon. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Roll Tide.